Hey guys, my first guest is an author, speaker. He calls himself an ordained minister. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> and he's a he's a world average breaker. Listen, this guy is so on fire. You are not going to be disappointed when he comes on the show. And he's here tonight to help you get your ass off the fence. We're talking about how to let average go. And he's going to tell you a little bit more about that when we get in the show. Guess what, guy? He's in the fireside chat right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joseph Washington, Mr. Average Breaker himself. I don't even know how we got you on this show, man. Brother, look, man, you know, when you call, I come. That's all. Big no, There's no more to add to that. <laughs> when I call, you come. Well, I'm glad you are here, man. Um, I saw you in, uh, for those that don't know, and you, if you are not on Clubhouse, Clubhouse is one of the newest social media apps out here. It is on fire. Uh, Joe just got on that yesterday, and, man, he is – Joe, you blazing trails out there, man. I've See, seen your bio. It's fine. Yeah, brother. Listen, man, I'm just a good copycat. I just, I, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, man. I looked at another brother's bio and said, let me just put my information, use this format. Dude, I read that thing before the show and I was like, dude, this, this is it. So yeah, this man. Is, yeah, man. That's it. That's it. Me and Joe going to do a, uh, a talk along with Kelly Cole, uh, Carla Stevens and uh, Jeanette Smith on thursday and it's at 5 p.m uh oh it's 5 p.m my time right joe right yeah it's 5 p.m pacific time so it'd be 8 p.m eastern standard time and uh we're getting a, we're doing a talk called get your ass off the fence how to get rid of uncertainty so uh all of us are going to be in there doing this chat if you are on the clubhouse app make sure you stop by and check us out if you're not on the clubhouse app I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> You're not gonna okay. care. You're not gonna be able to see it. Well, listen, guys, you can download the Clubhouse app. And um if you come through on, on my uh, if they if they notify me that you're in, I'll let you in. That's that's just how I am. I feel like somebody somebody brought me in. So it is my civic duty to let people in. I'm not like a lot of people be like, oh, I don't want to let you in. Now I'm telling you right now, um, we have to have a chat before I let you in because there's some house rules you gotta understand. Uh, when you get in the clubhouse because it is an exclusive club and i will be responsible for you if i let you in so uh download the go if you have a you have to have a iphone though or a uh tablet in order to get in so go download the app and uh, uh shoot me an inbox and let me know that you've downloaded the app it's gonna put you on a waiting list and then uh, i'll see if it notifies me and if it notifies me i'll let you in yeah. All right, Joe. So we're talking about average breaking tonight. So uh, the first thing I want to ask you, because people want to know this question, you, you know, we hear these terms by coaches and life coaches. And sometimes we don't understand because they like I'm a this and I'm a that. And it's like, I don't know what that means. So when you're talking about breaking the spirit of average or breaking people out of being average, I first want to know what is your idea of what average is? Well, you know, for me, um, it's it's a subject that's very close to my heart because most of my life, you know, I lived an average life, uh, but I made a decision years ago to let average go. And so I define average, uh, and this is not original to me, this particular one that I'm going to mention, but average is the top of the bottom and the bottom of the top, mm -hmm. right? It is the best of the worst and the worst of the best. Uh, I've coined the uh, definition of average as being like a painkiller that lulls you to sleep while it slowly numbs your senses. It's the mother who takes her daughter to the all you can eat buffet because she uh -huh. got seeds, right? And so uh -huh. we borderline that place called average. And so everybody has a different definition, Finch, of what average is. Uh, mine just happens to be, unless you can define it, you won't know that you are. So unless you can define what average is and as how it looks in your life, you're saying you won't be able to, I will say, break out of it, right? Right. Because if you can't if you if you don't know what average is, then, you know, you just become like everyone else. Right. Because it all becomes normal. It all seems normal. Uh -huh. right? But you've got to be able to identify the average places in your life and then make a decision to let them go. So average is average barely doing enough or only doing enough because it's comfortable. I'm, brother, I could not have said it better. And in fact, I'm going to coin that. And so that is fair to you, because I know this is being recorded. Uh, when I speak next week, I'm going to say my friend Finch 
say the power of the way. <laughs> right? The next time I speak, I'm going to say you and I was talking. But the third time I speak, I own it. It's going to go a little something like this. You know, I just dropped in my spirit that average what you said it was, and I don't have to mention you no more. So uh, that's why I always ask my audience and people when I, you know, when I have these seminars, I ask them to define what average is because I'm going to take your information and I'm going to use it, but I'm going to do it the proper way. That's why I love you, man. I, I've known Joe, guys, in case you don't know. I know Joe is, he's world renowned, but I've known him over 15 years oh. and I met Joe. He was speaking at a church that I was attending in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time. And I was like, man, this guy's awesome. He was in this book. Uh, what was the name of that book, Joe? It's called Walking with the Wise. So we had Zig Ziglar, Mark Victor Hansen, Jim Rowan, all these guys. So they called me and said, hey, you're one of the top speakers. Will you be a uh, contributing author? And I said, of course. And that was how I got my start, man. You know, yeah. off the benchmark of somebody else's stuff. And, you know, so that it was exciting. I'm going I'm finna, to I'm finna do a uh, news break here, Joe. You have never heard this before, okay? Yeah. Okay. When I heard that those many years ago, now that might have been 20, was that 20 years ago, Joe? Possibly, almost, right? Almost 20. Almost, almost 20. When I saw you on that stage and they was reading off all these accolades, I knew then you were somebody I needed to know because I had no idea who I was at that time. But wow. I knew you, be, be, when you see somebody in a book, it's not like on television. It's not, it, you hear them on the radio. When you see someone has taken the time to include someone in a book with a host of notable people that's known all across the world, and they coined them as someone who is one of the wisest people among this group of, this tier of people, I said, man, I don't know how I'm going to meet this guy, but he is someone I need to know. And I remember it like it was yesterday, man. You gave and signed a book for me. And I was like, from that point, I'm going to know this guy. And look yeah. at that. We've been friends for 15 years now, man. And, 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 and I've gotten the best of you, man, out of this because you're an incredible, incre incredible guy, man. Through all the jokes and all that, you are one of the best out there, man. So I, I'm honored to be on your show today. Oh, thank you, man. Okay, so let's get back to to, to average because a lot. Of, look, guess, listen, guys. If you guys have questions and uh, you you hear something, you say, "Oh, I want to ask this question." Just raise your hand in the chat room, no matter what platform you're looking at this on. Uh, we'll be able to see your questions. I'll put them up on the screen, and we will answer them um, because I, I want you guys to get the most out of this tonight. We got a lot of guests here, so we talked about what average is. So. You have a few steps on how to let average go because I think average is like a host of things. It's like depression. It's like it's like mediocrity. It's an anchor that holds people in place. So how does what are some of the steps that you use that you've used with people across the country for them to uh, learn how to let average go? Sure. And for the sake of time, you know, the abbreviation for average is ABG. And so we'll just concentrate on that for the sake of time. And, you know, we there, there are actually seven principles. You remember, I took the word average. And I created uh, each principle from each letter. And so the first thing one's, a person has to do, Fitch, is that they've got to adopt a positive attitude. I know we hear that. And I'm not talking about in the rah-rah sense because I'm really tired of the rah-rah messages. Uh, mm. Messages that get you fired up, but there's nothing you can do with it after the speaker is done. Uh, but I'm telling everybody that's listening to me right now, what got me to the White House in 2010 as a guest speaker was because I had a phenomenal attitude. I was invited by someone who liked me. And so if you can get enough people to like you, you know, you got folks out there right now during this pandemic that can change your zip code. They can change what you drive just because they like you. And then when I found out, if you take the word attitude and count it numerically where it falls in the alphabet, how many of you know that it comes out to exactly 100? When I found that out, that blew me away. A being the first letter of the alphabet, T being the 20th, go through each letter comes out to exactly 100. But knowledge comes out to 96. Hard work comes out to 98. Mm -hmm. We don't negate those skill sets, but it is your attitude that's going to determine if you're going to stay average or if you're going to become an average breaker. So adopting a different mindset as it relates to because, again, you know, you talk, you spoke about a pandemic. And let's be honest, the pandemic has changed everybody's life. I exactly. mean, from the, the people at the top down to the people at the bottom. And sure. everybody has been affected in some shape or form, some sure. more extreme than others. Sure. Uh, but 
how we have the mindset we've grown in this time period. Let's say someone's sitting at home right now. They're listening to it or they're watching it or somebody's friend say, hey, man, I saw this guy on this podcast. You should probably check this out. And they're saying, well, I mean, I'm thinking the worst of where I am. Mm -hmm. And you're saying to them, hey, you're going to stay where you are until you adopt a different mindset about what has happened. And, and then you decide to do something about it. Is that what you're saying, Joe? Yeah, and, and, and that's actually a great question. We don't want to negate what's taking place. And surely we're sending our prayers for those who have passed as a result of this COVID and the families mm -hmm. that are going through right now. But I'm here to tell you that this is perhaps the best time in history for people to make a mark that cannot be erased. I'm not saying your, your, your circumstances will change tomorrow because you start thinking positive or having a healthy attitude, but it's in the place that you're in right now that you can begin to exercise your right to move forward, giving yourself permission to win. And it starts with your attitude, getting rid of that stinking thinking. See, see, see Finch, I sat where they sat, man. When my mother passed in 2011 in that car accident and it changed my life uh -huh. forever. And I blew up to 350 pounds, became pre, uh, uh, I was pre-diabetic. Uh, I lost all of my speaking engagements. I gave up on life. Wow. But then I decided that I was going to do what she taught me to do when I had that severe speech impediment growing up. Mm -hmm. As you know, I stuttered severely for years. They called me the woo-woo boy. But my mother told me this, what I'm going to tell your listening audience right now. I don't care where you are right now. If you are willing to participate in your own rescue and not play the victim, you are going to win during this pandemic. This is your season to win. Put a plan together and let's get to work. Be a, what was that you just said about rescuing yourself? You've got to be willing to participate in your own rescue. Participate in your own rescue. I love that, man. I love that. You know, you, you have all, I, I've always said you are the king of acronyms because you can take words and break them down so eloquently and add some flair, add some, some other fire to those words that make them mean something to the average person. Because, yeah. you know, here's the thing, Joe, people see people like yourself who's been yeah. on world stages, like, you sure. know, uh, we everybody don't know somebody who spoke at the White House, man, or right. even had an invitation, right? Or traveled across the country, or you know, right. all these types of things. Right. And they they're looking at that and they saying, "Well, I mean, I don't have friends like that," you know. Right. what I'm saying, but at the at the same time, participating in your own rescue is one of those things where it has to be a choice. And I often say to people. They say, well, it, that's hard or that's that's not easy to do. I said, no, that's not true. The moment you make up your mind to do something, you can do it. Yeah. It's you not making up your you're not deciding to do something and what keeps uh, what makes it hard for you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know, loving somebody when you first meet them, oh, that's hard to do, or trusting somebody. No, you just gotta make up your mind to do the things that you desire to do, and yeah. you'll you'll actually see a difference in that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I find when when people get in enough pain, uh, they'll start to make progress. Right. But as long as you stay in that place of comfort, you'll stay right there. If it's on the job right now and you work in a job and it's comfortable, you probably will never leave. Uh, but sometimes you got to make yourself uncomfortable to hit that next level. And that's what I did. So any excuse that anybody has as to why they can't make it, I've got the T-shirt and the balloons and back <laughs> to let you. Know that you can make it. I'm a perfect example of what happens when you let average go. And you participate in your own rescue. Let Everest go and participate in your own rescue. Guys, if you just join us, we're talking to Joe Washington, uh, speaker extraordinaire. Uh, I don't even want to call you a life coach because I think that will put you in a category yeah. that is just like everybody else. Yeah. Joe is an average breaker. Yeah. I love that term, man. Yeah. I love that term. All right. Yeah. What's number two? So you got to adopt a positive attitude. You've got to value your time. You know, and I tell people all the time with your time, the greatest gift that you can give yourself is move opposite of the crowd. You know, uh -huh. Wendy and I go to a movie when before COVID, when we went to a movie, we never went, Finch, we never went on Friday nights here in Atlanta. We went uh -huh. on a Tuesday afternoon when we had the theater all to ourselves. And I could play the popcorn game. It was barely anybody in there. My wife and I could kiss and do whatever we wanted to do. <laughs> there was nobody in there. We moved opposite of the crowd because time is something you and I can never get back. I'm 57 years old, man. I remember when we were younger and I remember when I was much younger. And so if you're going to be an average breaker, you got to begin to value whose time, your time. And then also, let me say this, stop giving your time away to people who you think are more important than you. Because if you give me your time, I'm going to use your time for my benefit. Because mm. obviously you don't know what to do with your time. I will find time to, to, to make time for your time. All right, let's break that down, Joe. 
Because mm-hmm. somebody, so what's an example of somebody allowing somebody else to devalue or use their time? Yeah, you know, again, when you don't have purpose and and, and you're not, you know, you don't have a, a roadmap as to where you want to go, mm-hmm. people will convince you to come, you know, and work with them. And there's nothing wrong with helping other people, but you got to make sure it's a winning combination. Whereas Stephen Covey said it's a win-win. And so, you know, I don't, but there are people out there that will use your time to their benefit and you will never get a reward for it. Everybody's not going to be a podcaster like you and have a great show like this because they're not designed to do that. But they may be somebody who can do the background stuff because I always tell people this. I'd rather be an excellent second than a lousy first. So I stay in my lane. I stay in the place that God has called me to be in, and then I'm able to move forward. But people have got to begin to manage their time and use it wisely because tomorrow's not promised to us, my friend. That's true. All right. So value your time. All right. What's what's the next one? So adopt a positive attitude, value your time, and list the help of a mentor. And what do I mean by that? You want to get somebody that's going to stretch you and not shrink you. You're going to mm. get gonna make you better and not make you bitter. But you need somebody who's going to have the emotional integrity to be honest with you. And say, Finch, if you continue to do what you can continue to do, you're going to keep getting what you keep getting. So we've got enough people around us uh, that lie to us and tell us what we want to hear. I need somebody that's going to give me constructive feedback and not constructive criticism. We don't need to Ooh. criticize people, but we need to give them const- you know, constructive feedback to where they can grow. Stretch them. Don't shrink them. Joe, people are not. People are not saying that you 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 saying Joe. I want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly because it could be my headphones. Mm-hmm. You saying we don't need constructive criticism. We oh. need we need constructive feedback. What's the difference? Well, because constructive criticism often often comes from a person who's already in their own personal doom and gloom. So they need All to right. find somebody else that they can pour onto or they can you know make look crazy. But when I give you constructive feedback. It's normally I'm giving it to you from a place of a place I personally have been myself and I want to see you win because it's not it's not what you say. It's how you say it to a person. Mm. You know, you know what? You know, with grown people, we're very much into tones. So you can have the wrong tone with me and you lose me as an audience altogether. Right. 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 I need you to criticize me. I need you to start with the win. Hey, Joe, you're excellent at this, my friend. But this might be something you might want to look at. I think if you do that, this will push you further ahead towards your goal. So it's how you say what you say, but give them constructive feedback and not constructive criticism. Constructive feedback and not constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, Joe, in your opinion, why do you think people operate with average when so much more is available to them? Because average is comfortable. Average is a mm-hmm. place where you don't where you don't get noticed. Nobody's going to bother you. You can stay in your comfort zone. You can be average and you can just hide where yeah. the crowd is. Because you remember what I told you a long time ago. Average people follow crowds. Average mm. workers create them. And Ooh. so those individuals that want to stay average, they will stay in this crowd and they know they can hide and never get noticed. But when you make this, make the decision today that I'm going to win and I'm going to stand out. Hey, man, the critics are coming. The people are going to come. People are going to have stuff to say, but it's OK, because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you win and that your children's children's children win. Man, it is time to build yeah. legacy. It is time to break the spirit of average. It is time to let average go, man. And that's so I'm I'm glad you said that, um, because I, I always tell people you have to adopt a mind over matter mentality. Right. That mind means no matter. Exactly. Absolutely. So many of us, uh, we mind what people say. We mind how people envision us. We mind how people feel about us. And that's what keeps us in that pool of average. Uh, just just barely getting ahead, barely making it because we're so consumed about other people's thoughts and opinion. And Joe, here's the thing that people may not want to talk about. A lot of that is what your mama and them think and feel about you, what your dad and them and your cousin and them, the people that you swear you love the most, you're so anchored by what they think and feel about you that you are operating with an average mindset and you are flowing with the crowd and you are not standing out or or blazing trails. Yeah. And if you're going to make the decision and have the courage to let average go tonight, please don't tell anybody. Ah. Nobody. Just do it. Understand that documentation beats conversation all day long. Because as soon as you start telling, oftentimes you'll tell the wrong people. That's why it's important, Finch, that we're very careful who we bring into our future. 
Mm. to our purpose. And so when I decided to let average go, when I was working in corporate America and writing my book, nobody knew. I was hiding out at uh, Barnes and Noble back in the day, writing and doing it. And then all of a sudden, Joe came out with this book after walking with, after being and walking with the wise. Hey, man, mm. we didn't know you was writing a book. I yeah. didn't to tell you, right? I'm doing what I'm doing. And so the rest is history. So be careful if you're going to make that decision to let average go. Be careful who you share that with. Just do it. Just do it. Joe, I wish we had more time, man. I, we're, we're going to continue a, a conversation similar to this on Thursday in the clubhouse, guys. If you're not a part of the clubhouse, because clubhouse is invite only. Mm -hmm. So go download the app right now. Uh, shoot me an inbox or, or if you know me personally, shoot me a text when you have done it. And uh, hopefully they send me the notification saying you are in uh, on the waiting list and I can usher you right on in. Uh, I don't mind doing that. So mm -hmm. just do that, guys. But, Joe, uh, let people know how they can how they can connect with you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram at Joseph B. Washington dot com. Um, I'm building out a brand new website. So that's not available now. Or you can uh, just if you want to email me, you can email me at Joseph at let average go dot com. Uh, but I'm findable. You can find me if you want to find me. So you can be found out here in these streets, huh? I can be found out in these streets, man. Real and talk. he's on the clubhouse with me, and we're going to do a talk on Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. We're talking about getting rid of uncertainty. And yeah. that, I think that's a, that's still a tone about how to let average go, Joe. It is. And, and, and there's a lot of uncertainty in the world now, and we totally, totally understand it. Um, but I just want to say to your listening audience, today is the day that you let average go. Today is the day that you take the rounds, uh, you, 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 you take your life by the round and you move forward, man. Everybody deserves that life so that we stop living vicariously through that show that we used to watch on MTV called Cribs. Uh huh. All the good stuff all these guys have and go, man, I wish that was me. That can be you. You can have health, wealth and love and all of that when you make the decision to do that. So appreciate you, man. Great show. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Joseph Washington, go follow him right now. When we come back, we're going to have someone that's going to help you shake it up. Uh, he's called The Mentalist, and, and he's going to get inside your mind and help you think a little differently. It's a lonely theme tonight about self-improvement. We got more on the way when you come back. This is Off the Fence. I'm Fence. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just like Bust it. I have the radio on the telly.